Hello, my name's Nicole Gribben. I'm Chair of the Osteopathy Board of Australia. I'm sharing with you the revised capabilities of osteopathic practice, which apply to all osteopaths, regardless of whether you work in education, management, or in other clinically related roles. All osteopaths need to be familiar with the capabilities of osteopathic practice, as it is the overarching document that describes the practice behaviours of safe and competent practitioners. And it is important that you understand how to use, reflect and apply the information in the capabilities in your day-to-day -day work. They're used by educators to develop osteopathic curricula. They're used also to determine student competency. They're used for people who have trained overseas and who are trying to attain osteopathic registration in Australia. They're used also by consumers who need or want to learn what to expect from their osteopath. And they're used by the board when the board looks at return to practice plans for people who have had an extended break from practice or when we receive a complaint or notification. I'm Brett Vaughan, Chair of the Australasian Osteopathic Accreditation Council. The Council's functions are to accredit osteopathy courses in Australia and to assess overseas trained osteopaths who wish to come and practice in Australia. For osteopathy education providers, the capabilities for osteopathic practice can be used to guide the structure of a curriculum and through the accreditation process, the capabilities for osteopathic practice are referred to. For overseas trained osteopaths wishing to come and practice in Australia, the Council undertakes assessments on behalf of the Osteopathy Board. These assessments are informed by the capabilities for osteopathic practice and the assessments will cover some of the components of the capabilities. Hi, my name's Paul Oreck. I'm a practitioner member of the Osteopathy Board of Australia. This capabilities document developed on the basis of the 2009 document. The Board consulted widely including practitioners, the public, and other stakeholders, including educators. The aim was to develop a modernised and benchmarked document that was able to be compared with other professions. The practitioner role is evolving all the time, and this document is particular future looking. The day-to-day -day impact on practitioners is particularly with regards to roles that they play, and I'd like to highlight a few that are emerging. Some of us are already practising well in these roles. The first one I'd like to highlight, highlight is the quality and safe use of medicines. This is true across all professions, health professions in Australia. They have to be enhanced knowledge within this realm. The second one is the engagement with closing the gap, and that is culturally sensitive health practitioners, particularly with regards to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. And the third one is leadership. Leadership in education of our students and graduates, educating our public, and also leadership in running our clinical businesses. The expectation is that practitioners will engage their continuing professional development to enhance their skills and knowledge in these areas for the future. We encourage everybody to read the capabilities of osteopathic practice, which are available on the website and are accompanied by a series of frequently asked questions. Thank you for listening to this video.